Hey everyone, and welcome to Talks A Lot, boys. We're back at it again with another song ranking album review, and I'm your host, as always. My name is Tyler. I'm joined once again by the boys. We got Brennan. What's going on, folks? And we got Kyle. How's it going, everybody? And today, we are finally getting to the final Tillian era album of Dance Gavin Dance. And that album is Acceptance Speech, his inaugural album with the band. Will we do any albums from uh, previous to this? Maybe. If you ask. But if you don't, who knows? I, I don't know. That's not important right now, because today we're only talking about Acceptance Speech, an album that I have kind of always liked since I first heard it, and I know that's not really the case with either of you, and I'm interested uh, to hear your opinions on these here songs and this here album. Uh, just je- give me your general thoughts before we, before we tear into the actual songs here. Uh, Kyle, yeah. I know for a fact that you have actively told me that you don't like this album before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. just explain to me your your wrong thought process. So, all right. So <laughs> here's, here's we're gonna we're gonna lay down the, the truth, right? So I, <laughs> way back in the day when little old me was like, Tyler, what's dance, Gavin? Dance? And you were like, Wow, that's a weird voice for you, Kyle. You're not British, but like, here's the albums to listen to, and you gave me instant gratification and Mothership to very legally put on my computer. And I <laughs> I was like, dope, is there any other ones I should listen to? And you're like, yeah, but like, don't worry about it right now because like dip your toes into instant gratification and mothership. Cause like rightfully so, they're, they were great and they are great. Uh, especially cause mothership had just come out. So everyone was like crazy hype about that mm-hmm. immediately right then. Uh, and I always knew acceptance speech existed cause I like, I looked it up when I got home and then obviously every other album before it too. But I was just like, hmm, that's an album. And then I listened to it like very, very like one time really quickly at some point and like a couple of the songs stuck with me, but like overall, like nothing really stuck. And I don't know if it was just like, I listened to it really fast. didn't really like soak it in or what, but like, I was just like, eh, it's got some bangers, but like, eh, overall. And then I didn't listen to it literally all the way up until the point where they did the, 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 the remix remaster, whatever the hell you call it, the 2.0. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, oh, right. Acceptance speech. And I, <laughs> I was like, cool. I should listen to this again. And I listened to the remaster. And I was like, oh, this is kind of good. I'm kind of down. And then like, I listened to it like every once in a while, kind of vibing with it. And now leading up to like us doing this, I've listened to it pretty intensely for the last couple of days. Uh, kind of like really like even like just looking at all looking at the lyrics in front of me while I listen to it and everything. And I've got to say, I definitely underrated this album hardcore because I have strictly said, I just don't like this album. And it was from a very neg- negligent, uh, closed minded place of not actually listening to it thoroughly. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's very, that's very big of you to, yeah. to admit that you were wrong and, yeah. and come around on that. So well, kudos yeah. to you. Yeah. It's hard not to admit that I'm wrong when it's very blatantly obvious that this <laughs> album is pretty sick. <laughs> uh, my tangent's done. Brennan, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think about this album, sir? Because I know you also underrated it for a long time. Uh, well, actually, um, I'm. I mean, as we know, I've I've been a fan of this band the longest, but yep. there was a time where I did kind of fall off the bandwagon for this band. Uh, that was around like 2011. So you're talking like DBM two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually caught them the the first time I ever saw this band live was at Warp Tour 2011, and that was like right off the heels of DBM two. Like Johnny Craig was back in the band, you know, and I mean like. I really like DBM one and like the Kurt Travis era was like, all right. Like it was good, but like, I mean, at the time I thought the Johnny Craig was just a lot better. I mean, I think my taste has probably matured a little now, but like after that, like, uh, bands like, like Moss to flames, you know, like I was really into like bands like that. Like a day to remember really started taking off. I mean, of course like they were already big, but like, I don't know. Like at that point, like common courtesy had come out. 
Uh, we came as Romans was still big. Like there were like other bands. I just kind of like fell off of the DGD bandwagon and like hopped on theirs. So this album came out, what, 2013. And I listened to the very first song, which is Jesus H. Macy. And I just didn't like it. <laughs> like at oh, all. Oh, damn. Uh, and actually in my notes, I actually go into pretty deep detail, but there's one part of that song that I just, like, even to this day, like, I don't really like. Hmm. And for some reason, it just, like, soured me. And I just stepped away from this album, thinking, like, all right, I'm not going to fuck with that. But then um, Instant Gratification came out in, what, April of 2015 or whatever. And by that point, like, we're at PTI. Like, I remember, like, leading up to it, they released, like, obviously, We Went the Night. They released uh, On the Run. I think like one other song, I can't exactly remember which one, but I remember like hearing those being like, holy shit, like this is incredible. <laughs> and then like Instant Gratification came out and it was like all I listened to for like legit like an entire year. And then <clears throat> like I told Tyler about the band and of course like Instant just, Instant was the only thing that was out at that time. I mean like Mothership didn't come out yet. And I remember Tyler asked me like, oh, like what should I listen to? And I was like, oh yeah, I listen to like Downtown Battle Mountain. Yeah, I listen to like you know, like the subtitle is not bad, but like, uh, like, and then he was like, what about acceptance speech? And I was like, fucking forget that shit. Like, <laughs> like don't worry about that shit. You know, like gloss right over that for now. And then like probably a couple weeks later, he comes back to me and he's like, dude, uh, I don't know how to say this, but acceptance speech kind of slaps. <laughs> and I'm like, Hmm. All right. Well, I must be wrong. So, of course, I, like, listen to the entire album, and I am like, Tyler has taste. But it's just... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just... It is a really solid album. There's, like... On Twitter, you see, like, a very small... It's almost like a cult following of DGD fans rank this as, like, the top album of all yeah. which like i don't necessarily agree with but like i can see why some people have that kind of thought process i mean mm -hmm. like i said i don't agree with it but for me this album like kyle said it's the transition into the tillian era and there are some things that they try that sometimes like some things i really land some things really don't and i think that's just like the elimination process of them as like a band Mm -hmm. You know, like they, like I said, they tried some things. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it really works. Sometimes it's just like, holy shit. Like these guys are like musical geniuses. Mm -hmm. And this is also where I think Will Swan shows that he like, he's really good at adapting to his vocalists. Like, right. like with DBM one, it was like more like a somber tone, but it had like some licks. And then like with Kurt Travis, it was more of like groovy I guess that's like one way of putting it. And then like with DBM two, like it was just licks and fucking like, you know, grooves and like really good, like chord progressions and stuff. But then this album, it's like really like kind of free flowing. Yeah. But then it has some chugs, like it has some breakdowns and like John mess, like finally figures out how he wants to scream. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, this was it. This is where he picked the style and fucking stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. Cause like every album before this, He's literally doing a different vocal style. Pretty much, yeah. And then from acceptance speech onward to now, he's like figured it out. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. if it was just him trying different things, if it was him like figuring it out. I mean, I really want to ask him that. Like, if I ever get the chance to meet him, I'm going to be like, hey, dude, I'm just curious. Like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like. But I mean, th this album, it, it is incredible. I think it's slept on. It's underrated. If you put if you put a gun to my head, I don't know where I would rank it amongst the Tillian releases, though. Yeah, I don't know either. Like, I again, like I've always liked the album, but like, would I say that I think it's better than any of the albums that came after? Personally, no. I can see why some people would. I could totally respect that opinion. Um, just in my personal opinion. I don't think it's better than any of the following 
albums. Still good, but uh, like you were both saying, I think like because this was kind of the transition into you know having Tillian in the band and kind of finalizing their sound and their style, I think like this album was really important and they did a lot of things well, but the following albums just kind of took the formula they came up with here and made it better. Yeah, um, yeah. for sure, dude. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into it. Let's just we're, uh, we, we oh, gotta yeah. dive in right now because uh, I'm I'm ready to fucking rank this shit. Um, so for those of you still listening who haven't heard uh, any of our previous album review song ranking things, we're gonna rank all the songs on the album from worst to first. Um, and I'm going to list off the songs in the order that they appear so we know what we have to work with. First up is Jesus H. Macy, uh, followed by The Robot with Human Hair Part 4, followed by Acceptance Speech, followed by Carve, Doom and Gloom, Strawberry Swisher Part 3, one of my personal favorites, uh, Mm -hmm. Honey Revenge, Demo Team, Death of the Robot with Human Hair, The Jiggler, and turn off the lights. I'm watching Back to the Future Part Two. Uh, gents, <laughs> normally I ask you where you think we should start, but I'm gonna throw my hat into the ring immediately and say that there's one song on here that I think absolutely deserves to be the bottom spot above oh. all the other ones. Really? I think I know what it is. <laughs> really? Oh shit! All right, I'm curious to know. Doom and Gloom. Hmm. Is that what I you know thought, you it was thought be that Brennan? I was going to say? Demo Team. Yes, but that's what I thought you were gonna say too, because that's the I only one I even had. An idea I have about. been very vocal about my hatred of Demo Team, but I really just think that Doom and Gloom does not really bring anything special to the table. Well, even even Demo <laughs> Team has because Demo <laughs> Team is weird to me because it's like I hate eighty percent of the song, but the other twenty percent slaps super hard impeccable bro i know it's like it's just this sandwich of shit and then like in the middle there's just a creamy nougat center that's just pure slappage and i love it see tyler it's just a shame that it's wrapped in the garbage that is like the beginning and end of the song see tyler doesn't fuck with the drumming and like the weird like john mess like vocal effect Mm-hmm. See, that's also my feelings on it because, like, that was one of the ones that I just never listened to. And coming off of listening to it more in depth recently, demo team, I uh, I now realize that that's just one I never really want to listen to because I just really <laughs> I'm not a fan. Like, yeah. there, are, in, in you you so perfectly put it where there's like a little nougat in the middle that's so great because like my notes are just like the weird edited vocals are kind of weird. Change up in verse three is pretty abrupt. Oh my God! Those vocals over John Mess are clean as fuck, and yeah, then it goes right back to <laughs> yeah. like I, I literally had weird. in my notes, <laughs> and like and like I I've known that this was a thing, and Brandon and I have, t- have talked about this song for a long time about our thoughts on it, oh, but yeah. like <laughs> it's it's literally just like the song is just like bad. Like I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna pretend that I like the first part of that song. It's weird. They tried doing this weird, like, techno stuttery thing. Yeah. They auto-tune Tillian's voice to the point yeah. that I it just sounds bad. And then, like, and then all of a sudden, you're just on, like, this fucking epic, smooth-ass Tillian train ride into the heavens going, like, a thousand miles an hour. And it just, like, slaps my fucking socks off. And then it's just like, oh, my God. It's, it's just raining. Tasty tasty smooth creamy buttery goodness into my soul and then it just goes back to how it was before and i'm like well that what the fuck was that you just blue balled me for like 30 seconds and now we're just back to getting kicked in the nuts for another minute and a half like i don't i don't know but i (laughs) do think that the, the middle part is so good that it should bump it up to be the number uh the second to last spot (laughs) <laughs> see I don't, I don't agree at all actually. i don't either well all right doom and gloom i this is i guess this is my defense of doom and gloom because i thought you hated doom and gloom more than any other song on this album i remember you specifically telling me that before i i used to a lot and they're okay so your hatred of demo team how it's like 
basically two parts of the song, two massive parts of the song you despise. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how I am with Doom and Gloom. The intro is so fucking long winded. Yeah. And then it goes into like, like, you know, stuff happens a bit and then I'm stuck back in the intro all over again. Yep. But like, instead of, instead of how demo team, it ends the song. Mm -hmm. Now I really like, like the very ending of demo team where it's like, like, cause I really like the drum part. You mean like, Doom I, and Gloom? I, no, 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 no. I'm talking demo team. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting back to Doom and Gloom, but like the drum part and like the parts that you hate, like I love the drums, but I totally get your gripe against John Mess's like vocal effect and then Tillian's vocal effect. Like I don't really fuck with that either. Yeah. But like to me, like Matt Mingus on the drums, like it's just so fucking sensual. That's Cause, fair. Cause it, I mean, I just, I just like it. I, I appreciate the effort he's going into. Mm hmm. And then, like, the very end where it's just John screaming, like, get it away from me. Like, I don't know why. I just really fuck with that part. Like, it, it's a good ending to yeah. the song. I can agree with that. I mean, I do think that that is, like, a redeeming quality. Yeah, but but like you said, that, that song, I listen to that song for when Tillian is singing above John Mess. That part is just fucking sexual. <laughs> like, it, oh, my gosh. But anyways, where Doom and Gloom comes in, I basically get the same effect. Because it is like the most long-winded intro, and then it goes back to that long-winded intro. But like wherever like that the second intro per se like ends, and it's just like the tapping part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just like holy shit! Like 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 Will Swan's fingers just go into hyperdrive, and then like all of a sudden like you know the double kick is like getting back into it, and it's just like licking, and then like a breakdown to end it. Now, granted, I I do hate this song. <laughs> <laughs> i really like those parts but the intro and then like going back to the intro like the soft reset yeah i'm not sure that i think it should be like much higher than 11 just like in my opinion i feel like the highs of doom and gloom are not as high as the high point in demo team and like, i am I am totally in agreement with that. But here's yeah. the thing, right? Is that I think that the lows in Demo Team are a ton lower than the lows in Doom and Gloom. I think they're in like... In my opinion. I think they're on the same level what you, of so not enjoyable for me, but that's just my personal opinion. What what specifically... like? So you, you mentioned like the long-winded intro. Is there mm -hmm. like anything else like in particular? Because like, like they come back to that like um, that kind of thing again. Is there like anything else that really is like pulling away from this? Song? I mean, honestly, it's just not to put words in Brennan's mouth, but like because like you said, like I agree with the long-winded part. It's just it's way too long. And I just really don't like the way Tillian sounds in part of it. Like he's really? trying to like hit these high notes and I just don't really... I don't really like it. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's very rare that I don't like the way Tillian sounds in any capacity. But like, I don't know. It just, it doesn't do anything for me. And I have it's, it's literally just me like waiting for the rest of the song to kick in. <laughs> I have another question to ask. Yeah. What do you guys think about Jesus H. Macy? I like that song. I like that song more than I thought I did. I have a lot Same. of notes on that one, actually. I do, too. Well, I actually don't have as many as similar songs, but I have a good amount of notes yeah. for it. It's, I, that song, I went in... Oh, go ahead, Kyle. I, I was going to say, like, that song is, like... It falls in the realm of, like, this song is super solid and bops pretty hard. And so, like, there's no reason for it to be low on the list, but I don't think it really gets into, like, the top echelon of this list either. Like it's like it's it's yeah. it's a solid like middle of the pack maybe up a little bit for the middle of the pack kind of song in my opinion. Yeah. Um. But I could hear arguments for it being like middle to like a little bit lower too. I just don't. It's definitely like <laughs> there's a weird couple songs that all kind of land in the middle, and then there's a couple songs that I really like, and a couple songs like Doom and Gloom and Demo Team, and a couple others that I'm like are eh, you know, a little yeah. bit more iffy on. I. Because... What's up? Oh, I was just gonna say like going into listening to the album i was fully prepared to like not even take notes for this song and just be like it's average moving on but like upon like listening to it again today and kind of like really breaking it down like i just think it has a lot more to offer than i initially gave it credit for like i think especially the instrumentals like there's a lot of variety and depth and they really like they add a lot of like uh trademark dgd like 
change-ups in it, you know? Like, more than I even realized or gave it credit for before. And I think the way that they kind of, like, layer Tillian and, and John's lyrics at the end over the drums is, like, really cool, too. I just think, like, it's not the best song on the album by any stretch, but I think it does enough um, objectively to be at least, like Kyle said, at least middle of the pack. Okay. Brennan, do you think it's near the bottom? Because, I mean, I actually, we've already alluded to the fact that you don't like this song <laughs> <laughs> with your telling of stories before. Yeah, like, I think this song, Doom and Gloom and Demo Team, should be the bottom three. I mean, that's just my opinion. Obviously, we're going to hash this out. There, I mean, as Tyler just said, there are, like, some incredible, like, layering, especially at the end. Like, the outro of this song, I fucking love. Mm-hmm. But this is the song that pushed me away from liking acceptance speech all those years ago. Because the part where it just slows down and it's basically like just Tillian, like with like some like minor guitar work. Yeah. Like like pretty much right before that outro. Like even to this day, I straight up dislike that part. It's just like with Tillian like just like how it like just how it sounds. I just can't fuck with it. Like I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what it is. I just can't See? vibe with it. And it, it's like it's like one of my least favorite Tillian parts like of all time. Like I just I don't like it. No, but the rest of the song is all right. So it's like to me like that low of a low, I think puts it towards the bottom. Because like I don't even have an issue with any part of that song. If I'm being perfectly honest, yeah. like nothing nothing jumps out to me as being bad. I think it's just like there are better songs on the album. But to me, I don't. I, I would be fine with putting it lower, but I don't think it should be bottom three. Yeah, I think so. Something that I like tried to like, like, at, with, like the mindset I tried to have when I listened to this album, like, especially today, I was like, you know, for me, obviously, like my first witnessing of Tillian was like, we own the night, instant gratification, mothership. But like, I'm like thinking I was like, this was like a lot of people's first time really like getting into T Tillian. Mm -hmm. and so i was like what like what is the mind of someone when this album first drops and they're like oh this tillian guy is the lead singer right and then like in jesus h macy there's that part where like it's just kind of him singing with the guitar behind him mm -hmm. i almost felt like it was like this moment of like and here he is you know like he's he's out sure. he's in the middle of the spot he's very exposed and he has little bits in his singing that i've had it up to here he like really like digs in a little bit like it's mm -hmm. really like raw and he like just kind of like goes for it and like is it like the cleanest thing he's ever done no but like i really appreciate the fact that like this is the first thing everyone's gonna hear from me being part of this band as like the first like the the number one song on this this whole album right i don't know what other you know if singles came out before this or whatever but like album drops this is the first like full album that anyone picked up from the store and tillian is part of this group and that is like the first thing we hear from him and i really appreciate the fact that he really just put it out on the line it really like it just kind of fits his personality from what i've seen of him going forward and like seeing him nowadays it's just like He's not afraid to like put it all out on the line, even if he's brand new in this band. And he's like, is it the cleanest thing I've done? No, but like, damn, am I going to go for it? And it's like, obviously he's shown that he can make it cleaner going forward. And I, I really dig it. And mm -hmm. it's just a mindset thing that makes me appreciate the song a little bit more, you know? Yeah, but I, I can agree with yeah. all of that. So like you said, you went into this with the mindset of, okay, what's a brand new person going to you know, think when they hear this. Yeah. Now, like, you're talking about the part where he's like, I'm in my zone or whatever. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, I that fucking part, hate that and then, part. The part before <laughs> that, too, where it literally, because, like, the first time he comes in, like, in the entire song, where, I mean, what are the exact, I don't remember what the exact lyrics are, but, uh, because I'm looking at the lyrics right now, I just don't remember what exactly they are. But before yeah, you ask what you think you want to know, yeah, and it, it literally yeah, like, is just like a really simple drum beat and like a guitar just kind of lightly riffing under him is where he like really is kind of exposed a lot in that moment. That's the part that like really hits me. And I, I personally do like the the part you mentioned too after that, mm -hmm. the the zone, it like being in the zone part. I really dig it. I think it is really, you know, a stylistic choice that he did that I get that maybe you didn't like a ton, but I think it's pretty cool that he was willing to go just kind of swing for the fences, like all so all over the place in this first yeah. song. Oh yeah, I mean that's I like cool, it. and Danny. I mean, it's just I don't think it sounds yeah. good. 
I mean, that's I think fair. you're I think you're outvoted in that capacity. <laughs> it's also Blumber. like one of the most streamed songs of this album, so I would yeah, generally well, think that maybe you might be outvoted in general. I, by I just think that like populace. I think the fact that like the song in general offers so much and is so like technical and layered yeah. heavily outweighs the fact that you don't like the way he says a couple words. In my opinion. Oh, I mean, fair enough. I mean, like, like I think the outro of this is incredible. It's just, yeah. Like, this is the song that literally pushed me away from this album. So I got to get that note out there. Right. And that's, no, that's fair. fair. Yeah, that's super yeah. fair. Because, I mean, like, the more, because, like, I'm listening to it right now, and I'm like, yeah, honestly, like, there is a little bit, like, the way he says bones and, like, zones and stuff like that is yeah, a little like, odd. Like, it like, definitely is, like, very I specific I still like that part, though. I think I it's I do, cool. too. But, like, I, the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm, like, I can hear what you're talking about. I still think it sounds cool, but, like, I totally can hear where you're coming from on it, though. Because yeah. it is it is different, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I've, the other note that I made about this, this is one of those songs that I feel like the, the change-ups are a little abrupt at times. Like, a little, like, kind of unclean. Like, right when it first switches to Tillian, I feel like it just is a little kind of, like, I don't know, like, when you hit, like, a fucking, like, pothole, like, driving down the road, it's like, oh, we got there, but, like, it was a little, like, <laughs> like, kind of, we just, like, uh, popped into it. I but, didn't really feel that way about it, but, like, I, like, I will say, obviously, like, they've done smoother transitions in, like, future albums, but, like, oh, yeah. I didn't think not it, like, like, jumped out to me as being, like, yeah. the transitions were bad. Like, I thought they were, I thought they were fine. I didn't really have an issue with any of them, but. No, I'm not, and I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying that they're not nearly, like to what I'm used to hearing, like, sure. from coming, like, from Afterburner. Like, and, like, because that's what I was, like, when I re-listened to this, I was like, why did I get so pulled away from this album right off the bat? And I think it's because even from this album to, like, Mothership, there is a lot of growth in them, just overall as a band, that, like, I don't yeah. think that happens nearly as much. And it's, like, like I said, it's not a bad thing. It's just something that is just, like, a, like, we're feeling it, we're going, and, like, maybe we're not on the exact same page, like, down to, the like, the exact point, but, like, and it's it still works, you know? It, like, not everything that works is, like, perfect, you know? Like, that right. wouldn't be any fun. So, like, I think they, they hone that in more going forward as a group, but in this, it is more like that kind of, like, we're putting this together, and, yeah. and it definitely clicks a lot. But there, I think there are moments, and I have it noted in a couple different songs where it was like a, oh, I bet you this is part of the reason why I don't really come back to the song as much because like, it is a little disjointed from like later sure. albums. But I yeah. dig that. Yeah. I. Uh, um, well, I mean, I, I we're we're in agreement that demo team and um, doom and gloom are going to take the bottom two spots. We want to vote on the order of that. I feel like I feel like I'm outvoted, but I just want to I want to uh, lock this shit in so we can move on. I will say real quick before we move, because I didn't really say anything about Doom and Gloom. With Doom and Gloom, it it's really interesting, right? Because like I do, I hear what you're saying about the long windedness, but I think there's just really like strong sense of like a building flow to this song, especially in the drums, because like you yeah. even hear the drums kind of like be really like like quarter notes and then like kind of double time and then like the double bass pedal shit to like keep building it, and then it comes back down and kind of strip down with Tilly and be a little bit more exposed and growing back up. And then I do think the uh, in that last verse, John Mess is going and Tillian's singing like ooze over top of it. And it starts yeah. building from there, there too. And I really like the ending of that song too. I yeah. think it really like just sw- like it because like, like you were saying, it's a little bit long winded, but I feel like that's all just constantly building up to this like huge ending. And like I even put it, it as like a cherry on top of this whole song because like right. I'm waiting for it to hit that point and it does by the end of that song. And I mean, and I, I get I, that like that doesn't really make it the best song because you're constantly wanting, you know, but I, there is a conclusion, you know, and I feel like demo team, it's just so everywhere that there's never like a defined thought for me to feel good. There's that one moment of, Oh, dope. And then it just leaves that. And it ends on a note that I'm like, (laughs) kind of, eh. that last moment of that song is still pretty solid to me. I feel like in demo team, but like, there's just so much in demo team where I'm just like, what, what, what the fuck's happening right now? (laughs) Like, what is this? What band is this? You know? And like, Nothing against them. I appreciate them for trying something, but like, I just feel like missed the mark a little on that one. It wasn't, yeah. I really didn't love that song. But I will say I for, for Doom and Gloom, like, the, I think the ending is the best part of that whole song. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wish that they didn't make me sit through the entire beginning of the song again to get there. That's I think true. that, like, if they didn't loop that around, 
a second time or at least not like the entire first bit then like i would i would not have really any knocks against it it's just like when i when it hits me with the beginning of the song a second time i'm just like wow i know how long this is gonna be and like i'm just i feel like i'm just waiting for it to end to get to the next part and like yeah. and, and same with demo team i mean that's how i feel like but like you said with demo team like the ending's okay but it doesn't really actually go anywhere after mm-hmm. it puts you back in it like anytime i listen to demo team it hits me with the beginning a second time and i just skip to the next song oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah, do we want to do do we want to do demo team at how many songs are on this album? 11. 11. 11. Do we want to put Demo Team at 11 and Doom and Gloom at 10? Yeah, I'm fine with that. All I right. think I am okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. And let's move on to number nine. Oh, I... Jesus, Macy. No. <laughs> I... I mean, I think it's coming up just yeah. based on, like, the uh, the competition. But, like... Yeah. I... I know, Brennan, you're not going to agree with this. Oh, my God. Um, Because I know after we saw it live... You like fuck with it a lot more, but I think Carve should be next. Personally, here's the thing about Carve: like, interesting, it's a good song, and I do like it more since we saw it live. But I'm not like super, super huge on the intro. The following section of it is like really punchy, and I really dig it. the The chorus is super catchy, but it's so yeah. short that it only makes up like one percent of the song, and that's like the main drawback for me. Yeah. See, I actually, I have, what's up? Oh, I was just gonna say because I have re- this is my like least notes on a song in this entire album, which is why mm-hmm. I wasn't super sure where this one would land. Uh, because I put like really heavy intro, don't know if I like it. I mentioned the punchy instrumentals and how I like literally wrote punchy instrumentals and you said it verbatim, and I was like, <laughs> dope, I'm glad we had the same feel. And then <laughs> I, I, was just, I even wrote punchy on it too. Hell oh, yeah, yeah. all on the like, same wavelength. <laughs> I was like, chorus slaps, but short, and then I put instrumentals do a really good job of blending the pop bits and the heavy bits together i think there's a lot of times where you can hear bits of each of each part in each other and it does a really good job blending like transitionally through those parts like especially when like one is more prevalent than the other and i think that's just really pleasing to hear in this song but like other than that there's not like i ended up putting like just solid song middle of the pack for this one too because i was like there's not a lot more than that to me and right you know, I feel like that's kind of the thing with a lot of songs of this album. There are either songs that there are specific parts of it that I go, eh, that was a weird choice. Or songs that I just go, this is solid. It's somewhere in the middle, you know? Like, it, but then there's a couple songs that I love. But, like, there's right. just, like, like, a handful of songs that I just, I have question marks about. Because I don't really know what you guys are feeling about where they go. And this is definitely one of them. Uh, I do have a song to contradict what you've put out into the into the Hold playing on. field oh, yeah you say something yeah, about yeah go for it go for it dude i actually upon like listening to this like, again because i've i've listened to this album four times today and carve is kind of like the cuddler of this album like you know how they always have a song that's like just a bit too short sure I mean, Carve, like, it feels more like a full song, but like Tyler said, the chorus is like 1% of an already short song. Right. So I can And it's the best see, part of it. Like, it sucks. <laughs> I Like, honestly, I think that, like, the punchiness, like, as far as it being an intro, yeah, it's a bit much. But especially, like, the second part of it, and then, like, they kind of change it up, like, with the double bass a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's amazing. Yeah, but, I agree with that for sure. Yeah, but like, but like you guys said, like, like the intro, like if the intro was like just a little bit less, and maybe, maybe like the chorus went on like a little longer, I think the song would be a bot. But I could, I can totally see your guys' gripes. Mm-hmm. I really like this song just because I like the punchiness of it. But yeah, I mean, I don't dislike this song by any stretch. I want to make that perfectly clear. I just yeah. like in the in the grand scheme of the album, I, I personally don't think that it should go any higher than nine but kyle you said that there was something that you thought might contest it yeah so i don't know how controversial this is gonna be because like i said i don't know how you guys feel about some of these songs um and i have in this song this song is literally all over the place and i don't know if i love it or kind of dislike it and it is death of the robot with human hair the fuck out of here i like that song man (laughs) 
<laughs> Kyle, I <laughs> I love you, man, but that is just it. That I know no. I know that you anticipated this, but that was a wrong choice. No, it's You're okay. Well, that's why I said I literally that. don't know if I love it or if I dislike it because there's so much going on, and I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. If you think it's like way later from now, that's fine. We can talk about it later. But um, that song is just the one that's like a question, like a huge question mark to me because there I, are parts of that song that I dig so hard, and there's parts of me that have me doing that weird like cock head going, wait, what? And I don't know super how to feel about it, so I didn't know. I guys, like, I've it. always considered that song to be one of my favorites off the album but that's like personal taste i don't think that we're near a point where we should be talking about it yet personally yeah but brennan are you are you in the same boat as me or the same boat as kyle where are you at or somewhere in between uh i mean like i said before i would put jesus h macy in that spot obviously that's not gonna happen um (laughs) i would i'll I'll, i will say right now i would put Jesus H. Macy below Death of the Robot with Human Hair. Yeah, oh yeah, no, I'm I'm talking about <laughs> Jesus H. Macy versus Carve. No, I know. I was just I was just throwing but that yeah, out. There, I, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, upon thinking about it, I mean, Jesus H. Macy does bring a lot more to the table than Carve, so I can't really. I mean, maybe Honey Revenge is close, but then that brings a lot more to the table as well. Yeah. But, I really like Honey Revenge. <laughs> I really, that's I like Honey like, Revenge I fucking, too. I fucking like, love that song. Yeah, that was one of the ones that surprised the fuck out of me. Compared to some of these other songs, like I think it's like pretty close to being up next. Like, yeah, I think Carve, honestly, I agree. That's that's like, kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, like I think Carve Carve number nine, and then let's talk about Honey Revenge for number eight. As much I'm, as that fucking pains me. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm open to the idea of that. I I kind of think. I'm kind of thinking that the next two spots might be Honey Revenge and Jesus H. Macy. Um, Because again, like Honey Revenge, we all love Honey Revenge. It's a delightful song. It's a fucking bop, dude. Like, (laughs) it's it's super catchy, and the lyrics are so fucking creepy. And it's just like such a jarring thing because it's like a song about this should not be fun to sing along to. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder, like, uh, Zach would always tell me, uh, like, you know, like, Zach's, like, really into, like, Nirvana. Yeah. And uh, they actually have a song, I think it's called, like, Polly or something like that, where uh, basically Kurt Cobain was like, I want to make a song that is so catchy that the world cannot help but sing along to like some really sinister shit, <laughs> like really like evil lyrics, right? And I'm kind of wondering if they attempted to do that with this song because I cannot help but like sing along to like pretty much s- suggesting rape. Yeah, that's basically the song is basically <laughs> like, if you haven't heard it, the song is basically about like a dude stalking a chick and talking about how he wants to like he watches her sleep at night. And he's waiting until she's alone so he can, like, kidnap her and take her home. <laughs> like, it's basically the point of the song. <laughs> Hit her with some chloroform. and Yeah. You know, like, I mean, but you can't help but sing along to it. I know. It's, it's, it's like so it's fucking so, catchy. It's catchier than it should be for the source material. And, like, that's, like, uh, to bring up, like, more recent shit, like, that's kind of why they ended up making Evil Igo on the Stan Atlantic album. Because they were like, obviously, we're not stalkers, but, like. You just wanted to make a fun song about a really weird topic. So that was probably, like, the thought process here, too, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's so good, but, like, damn, is it so fucking suggestive. Yeah. So. Uh-oh. Honey Revenge, I like a lot. Um, And upon more listenings of it, right? Uh, putting aside the lyrics, you know, I <laughs> we'll talk. Well, you know, we, we, we've mentioned them, you know, it's out there, and we were honest, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not talking about. It's just not talking. About, you know, it's probably it's probably move on. But anyways, uh, the <laughs> the I think instrumentally, this is one of the best songs on the album. If I'm being completely honest with you, there is first of all. They change meter all over the place in the song, which is really cool, which they yeah. don't really do anywhere else on the album, um, except for in little moments. Uh, there are crazy guitar licks that go from like just kind of being real like funky in the choruses with the 
whether you want it and shit and like the guitar's just like and i'm like whoa dude and then it goes into like the john mess stuff at the end and it's just like immediately back into power chords and stuff and something else that's really cool that i i i noted in my my notes i uh the first time that mixed meter stuff happens it's so like back and forth between tilly and and john just kind of like they take turns doing like their verses and then like the second time that that comes up they sing it together and it's like a really just awesome like natural build that they do and i really because like it's like one of those things where like you hear it the first time you go oh fuck like this is kind of cool they're doing this right like this is kind of out of left field and the second time it's just like it just got better holy fuck and like you're just like vibing with it even more all the way to the end and then like the like the drums get even heavier towards the end that it just keeps sending it man i really fuck i like this song dude I- <laughs> Well, I mean, so you funny. definitely sold me on it more than I was going to give it credit for. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I didn't that. break it down on a technical level like that. But I guess if if you have that kind of defense for it, I'm perfectly fine with bumping it up yeah. higher than I was planning on it. Because I like there, the song also. There's also, um, like, near the beginning, like, because, like, there's kind of, like, that really, like, like, almost like a, like, kind of like a love song intro where, like, you really don't know what the song is about yet. And then it kind of slows down and it like Tillian's like uh layer in the background sing like really distant Oz like almost like a fucking choir like in the heavens and it's so cool yeah. and it's like oh this song's gonna be about love and then it goes on and you're like oh no <laughs> and then you realize like actually <laughs> what it's, it's happening and you're it's like, totally oh, not about what? love <laughs> yeah well I mean it is maybe a little bit but not it's too much but uh, like yeah no. extremely <laughs> yeah forced. it's about, <laughs> it's about <laughs> one person loving someone else <laughs> yes it's about love and oh sense. my god I, yeah, no. I actively skip this song if I have other people in the car who haven't heard it before <laughs> because I'm like I don't oh want them gosh. to think I just listened to rape songs <laughs> like <laughs> That's yeah, no, probably I definitely, a really good call. <laughs> yeah. not, I By me defending the song, I'm not defending what it's saying because, you know, we'll leave that be. But I think yeah, that yeah, instrumentally yeah, yeah, yeah. and like written as a song, I think the song is not only like really complex with like some of the guitar stuff and the drum stuff that happened and like the layering of the vocals, but it also like just is a standout on this album because it does a lot of things uniquely that I feel like at least give like deserves the respect of like a middle of the pack spot in my sure. mind but i i'll leave it be because you guys seem kind of down for it to come soon but you know um, i'm down for whatever well i mean we're getting pretty close to the middle of the pack yeah yeah I mean, we, we're kind of we definitely... at the middle of the pack it's a shorter album so like i i mean so wait, we do... defended the fuck out of jesus h macy earlier do i'm kind of now thinking while i'm thinking about the other songs on the album you've just convinced me to not put it above honey revenge Yes. And now I'm kind of thinking that Jesus H. Me yes. should be number eight. And yes. I know Brendan is going to fully support this. <laughs> so, yeah. wait, so are we saying that number nine is for sure Carve? Yes. Oh, okay, because I didn't know if we like solidified that yet. Either. I really like that song, but I do think pretty much everything else in the album is better. I'm, I'm down for Jesus H. Macy being beneath Honey Revenge, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but yeah, I'm saying Jesus H. Macy at eight. All right, I am too. All right, let's do it. So I can't, I'm kind of mad so, at myself, but I'm also... So I was one off. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then, fair enough, fair enough. So what's coming up next, then? I uh, Is there oh, anything boy. that jumps out? Because now we're kind of in the territory of, like, I don't even really know. Do we want to do a round of tabling? I'm down. Um, sure, yeah. I want to I table Strawberry Swisher. I figured. Yeah. Um, Damn it. Brennan, go next. Go for it. Uh, hmm, man, I am torn. I am fucking torn. <laughs> Holy I, shit. It may be, honestly, I think Strawberry Swisher is kind of next. Ooh, it's really? Tabled. Yeah. Um, well, if it helps you make a decision, my absolute pick for being tabled for me is Robot Part 4. I'm fine with that. I am tabling that. Fair enough. Uh, it's a solid track. You know, since Kyle has brought it up before, and I think that, I mean, it does have a crazy ton of shit going on, I'm going to table Death of the Robot with Human Hair. Yay! Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm I, super that happy is about an that. absolute bop for me. I am, I am very happy with all of the songs that got tabled. Uh, <laughs> I can get down with, with all of that, which leaves so us is- with 
Acceptance speech, Honey Revenge, The Jiggler, Turn Off the Lights, I'm watching Back to the Future Part 2. Um, now, I will say, like I say about pretty much every ending song on every DGD album, it's a re- the song is great. Like, <laughs> Turn Off the Lights, I'm watching Back to the Future Part 2. Great. Perfect album ender. However, it's super long, and I don't typically go out of my way to listen to it. So I'm just going to throw that out there right See, now. I really uh, listening to it on its own. I, like, I mean, I like the song. I'm not saying it's like next or anything. I'm just putting that out there as like See my that? opinion. Turn off the lights. I will just refer to it as turn off the lights to save time. Uh, turn off the Fair lights. Enough. I. It was the other one I was considering tabling. If I'm being yeah. completely honest with you, because I, I figured yeah, someone like, was going to table it. To be perfectly honest, I that, thought that's it, what Brennan was going to table. That uh, song sh- and fuck it, "Robot with Human Hair" Part Four are the two that stood out to me the most on this album on re-listens. If I'm being 100 percent honest with you guys, uh, that's I think honestly, "Turn Off the Lights" legitimately like my jaw <laughs> hit the floor when I like listened to it more in depth. Like I'm not messing with you. That song impresses the fuck out of me, dude. <laughs> oh yeah. So we can table that one too. So now we're down to accepted speech, honey revenge, the and the jiggler. I'm okay oh, with boy. this. The three up for the next three spots. See, I I was thinking about all right. So the four I thought about tabling were acceptance speech, death of the robot, the jiggler, and of course Back to the Future Part Two. Oh man! Holy I shit. mean, I'm perfectly fine with the next two probably being the jiggler and honey revenge. Let's talk about the jiggler because we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, I'm and down, that's I'm down. Uh, on the chopping block right now. Yeah, th- this song, like, the Jiggler has a lot going on. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of change-ups. Uh, as Kyle said before, like, some of them, like, are a bit abrupt. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact that, like, they are trying a bunch of stuff, and this is, like, the first album with, you know, Italian, like, Tillian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or talent, like, Tillian. Like, it's just... I mean, I think the song is amazing. However, like... I mean, we have a fucking murderer's row. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I will say. This is fair. Honey Revenge versus The Jiggler. I think this is pretty legit. uh, The more I look at my notes, I think The Jiggler should (laughs) not be next. See, I'm down with that. I was just going to kind of go off what Brennan was saying. And I think this song has so many really great moments, but I don't think it's the best overall package. Because I do think that this song does, like you were saying, Brennan, has some of those like kind of abrupt changes in it. I think some of Tillian's yeah. vocals in this are dope as all hell. I fucking where it's oh, just yeah. like kind of yeah. just him and the drums going there, and that like first time he comes in. Uh I really like I didn't know how I felt about it at the first time I listened to it, but that initial guitar part at the beginning almost gives vibes of like when you show up to like an Aerosmith concert and you're just standing in the crowd, the fog's rolling out and you just hear like a really distant guitar and everyone gets all hyped up. It felt like, like a classic rock, like intro to a song. And I was just, it's just like just raw guitar with like an effect on it. And I was like, what is this? What's about to happen? You know, it's like, and I, I didn't know if I liked that or not, but like the more I listened to it, I'm like, fuck, I really dig that. It's a really weird little like way to go into like what this song is. And I, really dig mm-hmm. it i think i don't know man i also i really like the transitions and stuff in this song because like it really takes you <laughs> to like some different places you know like oh, going yeah. from you know the the opening you're talking about into like just some smooth sexy tillian shit that just i want to rub butter on my nipples while i listen to it shit's just smooth as hell i want to go down a slip and slide covered in chocolate sauce like <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> It's just, it's a jam. Never and, uh, and then, like, immediately going from that, and then they just, like, pick up your your fucking sedated body and throw it into just a maelstrom of John Mess and Blast Beats. And yes. It's, like, it's so jarring, but, like, it also just works somehow, and it's just kind of, like, the perfect DGD encapsulation, you, you know, just going from, like, one extreme to the other. Um mm-hmm. I don't know. Also, like, the end, where it's just kind of, like, building up at the end, and it's just, like, super epic, and it's, ah! Oh, I See, fucking like, love like, it. Like, right after that part, like, where it, like, just picks up your corpse and like, throws into, like, Blast Beat Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right after that, where it's just, like, Tillian, and then, like, really soft instrumental work, like, singing after that. And like you said, like, it, it's, like, it's, like, a bomb went off, and then, like, they're in the aftermath. Yeah. And, like, it's just, like, it's just, like, like Tillian, like, picking up the pieces, and like you said, it just, like, builds. 
and builds and builds and then boom it's like a like a hard reset like right back to the start of the song like it's just oh, like it, it does hit like like that like like you said it's just it's like a slideshow of like everything dgd is like tried to do in their like whole career like right, right there and like i said some of it's like a little abrupt but like but like those couple of like sequences right there like really do gel really well mm-hmm. <sighs> there's I, also man what's up uh i was gonna say that like in that build-up bit there at the end where tillian like that you mentioned you really like tyler there mm-hmm. is a moment where like before it does get to like where it switched back to john mess is like the twist and the knot bit and everything yeah. that the guitar, like, Will Swan comes and he's just shredding so hard. I was like, yes. whoa! Like, it's it's pretty tame and, like, oh, here comes something. But out of nowhere, Will Swan's just like... Bah, bah, bah. I was like, whoa! And then it just keeps building into, like, that ending bit. And whenever it, like, does switch back over to John Mess and it gets more, way more, like, punchy and heavy, mm-hmm. it that note, like, the final chord that he hits of that huge run, like, just keeps ringing. And I was like, fuck, that's sick! Like, I love that <laughs> so much. There's so much yeah. of that build-up that I do love. However, I do have Whoa. a gripe that I want to mention about this song. And it Uh-oh. is in that part that you mentioned, uh, Brennan, where it's, like, right after, like, they just send you through the maelstrom and he's, like, picking up the pieces. They add really weird effects to the guitars and instrumentals in that bit, where it's kind of like a... Like, it's, like... But, like, it's no, like, there's no, like, rhythm to it. And, like, I guess, the, like, I can kind of see it being, like, the picking up the pieces. So there's not a lot of, like, set, like, path to it. But it, mm. it I don't know, to me, it kind of catches me off a little bit. Because it, it does seem kind of just like a, everything's kind of just happening all over the place. And I it's not that it's, it I don't think it's bad. I just don't personally like it. I just wanted to bring it up because it's, like, a weird effect that really doesn't show up anywhere else in the song. I think it's just a weird choice, but that's just me. I want to put it out there. It's a gripe that I have with it. I still think the song's dope, as I've mentioned before. Um, I don't yeah. think it's next. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and say it. Honey, revenge should be next. The more we talk about this, the more I look at my notes for all the other songs. Honey, revenge is good. I just think everything else is better. See, I'm thinking right that like we're talking <laughs> some hot stuff about jiggly we're talk- talking some hot stuff about any revenge you know what we haven't talked about that also is on the chopping block that we've mentioned when there was three left is acceptance speech shut the fuck up <laughs> just saying no, that just, is on I'm the chopping kidding. block i'm just saying i'm putting it up there i know i know and i'm uh, telling you that i but... i like jiggler more than acceptance speech i do too i think I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kinda, also saying I Honey Revenge is close. I, I'm just saying. I will. I'm just saying. I oh, I can man. get down with the idea of the possibility of acceptance speech following Honey Revenge. As as in, like Honey Revenge will take seven, and then acceptance speech will take six. Yes, and then. Do we want to do we want to so talk about Jiggler acceptance go? speech a little bit because we haven't we haven't, we haven't touched on this one yet? yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have not. Um, Brendan, you have you have mentioned that you do love this song a lot, and it's one of your four that you really wanted to consider saving. So you go on ahead, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, I think this song hits like like the op like the opening part sets so like a really like it's almost like a sad atmosphere, like mm-hmm. I, like. This isn't a song that like most people could just like pick up and listen to all the time. So maybe that kind of docks it here, but I mean just like like we talk about like the back and forth. Mm-hmm. And like this song just like like between like John Mess and Tillian, that's just like I don't know, like I get that a lot. Like John Mess like in the beginning, like, you know, he's questioning himself. Like, you know, he's like, I do, I do. Like he's like literally asking questions about like himself like does he have his own back like is he like mm-hmm. you know who who has his back and shit and then like this like the song kind of like deconstructs for a second and then like Tillian starts picking it up like <sighs> holy shit how do I even like describe this but like the song is very somber for like a good chunk of the song right all right and then there's even like another big maelstrom that goes on, 
but it's almost like deconstructing. And oh, I wish I could just listen to the song right now. Yeah. But like <laughs> the ending, like the outro, like I'm not even doing the first half of the song justice, but like the outro is absolutely gorgeous. Like, yeah. It's it's a shame that like pretty much what he's actually singing about is like really fucking sad. Right. I mean, like he's talking about like legit like suicide. Right. And how, you know, he thinks he's going to like die alone and all that shit. But like the layering of it, like the harmony and like everything about it is like like the subject matter is ugly, but like how he's presenting it is just like immaculate. Right. Like, and i mean i guess like the <laughs> i hate that they do this sometimes but will swan comes in at the very very end with fucking woke up in a new bugatti i like that part though i think I the like ending too. of the song is I like, like the best part of it like i think that's what kind of makes it you know no and like i dig that i mean it's just it's like so out of left field so like i can see why people don't i mean i personally fuck with it but like the like the ending of the song is like such this like really like somber and like you know it's like beautiful but sad like it's just like this yeah. package that like they just like put it on me and i'm like holy shit you know, like like listening to it like all like today like just the layers and like it's like the harmony and like like tillian really like just swings through the fences of that part and it's just incredible yeah. i and just like, realized <sighs> that i put the notes for the ending of that song into the robot with human hair part four for some reason oh oh shit so that's confusing so now i really don't want acceptance speech to be next (laughs) because Um, i'm 100 percent on board with brennan for some reason i had the names switched (laughs) so here's here's how i feel about the song right i want to i want to lay lay upon you a point of view right all right um two minutes uh, approximately two minutes into the song which is about the halfway point. We get to the beginning of the build-up part with Tillian. We're like, and then John Mess comes in, and then there's like the more guitars and the laying of the voices and the Will Swan bit, and the ending gets even a little like weird, kind of like electronic-y, and I really like that. I think the entire last two minutes of the song are awesome. I think the first two half, the first two minutes of the song are very middle of the road for DGD. I think it is it is John Mess at the beginning. I think the I do I do parts are like neat but a lot of the drumming is exactly like matching his like syllables and the words and there's not a lot extra going on you get to the tillion bit that happens for like 30 seconds and it's 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 good it's good and like there's some cool instrumentals going on it goes back to like really heavy stuff with john mess and a lot of the drums are mirroring him again and then it gets to the nonsense bit where like he's just kind of like screaming and stuff and then it goes into that rest of that bit and i really like the more because i literally was like This song strikes me weird because the last half of this song, I think, is incredible. I love the last half of this song, and I think it's, like, part part of the best part of this album. I think the first half of this song is, like, pretty weak, if I'm being honest with you. And it's it's not that it's bad. It is not. It is just very, like, middle of the road, especially when you compare it right back to back with how good the ending of the song is. It feels like these two halves of this song don't deserve to be together, in my mind. I... I don't necessarily agree with all that. Uh, yeah, that's. A bit. Uh, I mean, like, right. I can see where you're coming from, I guess, but like, I, to me, like, the song, this this song really is one of the DGD songs that takes you on a like it it just takes you all over the place, and I think it does it in like all the best ways too. Like, you go from like the weird gang chanty shit at the beginning, and then you you know you go into like some groovy Tillion bits. To like some slowed down like chuggy John mess stuff into like quick and punchy John mess stuff into like a fucking techno freak out thing and then somehow that just like magically transitions into like the really like somber ending and I know we keep we keep talking about how good the ending is but like I say all the time that I love when songs like build up and shit and like the ending it literally like builds itself up and then deconstructs itself back down at the end and it's like the coolest shit ever like you it just it 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 it, i don't i don't even know how to like word it It, like it just keeps building up and building up and building up and then it just goes all the way back down to basically nothing and then you get hit with fucking will swan rapping 
And it's like, <laughs> what else could you fucking ask for in a DGD song? Like, it gives you everything. It's not necessarily, like, the best version of the all-in-one DGD package. Because obviously later albums have better songs. But, like, I think that, like, for the sake of this album, it kind of, like, encapsulates a little bit of everything that you want. And like Brennan said, like, the lyrical content in it is, like, very interesting also. Yeah. So, no, like, that, that is definitely... That I don't know. Like, the more... <laughs> I fucked myself over because my I had the uh, my notes mixed up. But, like, mm-hmm. I I don't want acceptance speech to be next. <laughs> no. I, I'm going to say it. This is one of my least favorite songs of the album putting it out there i think the last half of the song is great but i really don't really care about the first half of the song i'm just saying uh i also understand i'm outvoted and you guys just don't agree and that's fine i think that is more like a personal thing i guess yeah i just feel like there's just not a lot going on before the nonsense crazy bit that he does compared to the last half especially and maybe it is that juxtaposition i just like they're like instrumentally there's just like like, the rest of this album, Will Swan really shows off. And in this, he really is pretty tame until that last half of that song. And I'm like, why didn't, like, why is there not more going on in this first half? I don't because, know. Because, like, even with the John Mess stuff, like, the drums aren't doing anything crazy. Like, it, yeah, but even, it's just even in the beginning, even in the beginning, like, he does have, like, little licks. I mean, it's yeah. more of, like, to me, it's more of, like, setting an atmosphere. Like, kind of like how, I mean, I think this song I'm about to bring up does it a lot better. But kind of like how, like, Philosopher King does it. Sure. Where like it j- just sets up like this atmosphere of like him like questioning himself and being like unsure. Like that's like that's like the whole like vibe I get off of it. I can see that. You comparison. know, I, I feel and, like, and like you said, I there isn't like it's not instrumentally powerful, but like like I don't know, atmospherically it is. I mean, yeah. maybe more so to me than others. I mean, obviously, like maybe not you, but like. To me, it, it even like with like the Tillian parts that come in, like I just get like this like sense of like, there, he's more trying to set an atmosphere than like wow you with like like just right. a ton of like crazy shit. And even like amongst doing that, because I agree with that a hundred percent. But like even at the beginning, I mean, like Will Swan's still doing some like pretty pretty tasty licks and stuff. Yeah. Like I I wouldn't yeah. say that like the instrumentals are like underwhelming by any degree. I just think that like they didn't for that song and what they were trying to go for, they didn't have to like blow you away with just absolute insanity because I think that like they kind of struck this balance with it that like the, the focus doesn't always necessarily need to be on like crazy guitar riffs and stuff for, for most of the song, you know? I can kind of see where you're coming from. (laughs) because <laughs> i definitely think that like some of the parts in it i think are like more like a personal i don't like like i think the no the nonsense bit is like probably my least favorite part of this whole album i just think it's kind of stupid if i'm being completely honest with you i think but, it makes sense for the context of the song though because like if you think yeah. about it as like the he's kind of like you know talking to himself and like arguing with himself and then like his i i just imagine that section as kind of like he he's his inner voice is kind of just like freaking out at that point, and he like mm-hmm. is just trying to kind of quiet the the thoughts in his head, and that's when it like goes into the ending part where he just gets this like clarity, and like it's fucked up, but like he's like, okay, well like I'm calmed down now, and I'm just gonna kill myself to like get it over with, and it just like it's fucked up, but like that like the way that they kind of like do that, I think is like really cool because it kind of like yeah. helps tell the story of like what the song is about yeah i think that like that's like the reason of the name right i mean obviously it's the name of the album but like he's he has like such an intense battle with himself and then like at the end of it he's just like accepting of it right like 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 tyler said like like that like nonsense bit like yeah i mean it is kind of like odd but like that's like the crescendo that's when like you know he's like the rubber's meeting the road as far as him like trying to like I, don't know, I feel like it's him, like, finally, like, conquering his, like, well, he doesn't really, like, conquer his demons, because, like, obviously he's gonna go kill himself, but, like, he, like, when gives he, like, up, I guess, is yeah, the better that's, way of that's, like, it. when the internal, like, that's yeah. when the internal struggle, like, really takes place, and right. then, like, 
it, like all this pressure is just released and then he's like okay i guess it's time to go do my thing now right it just i think it's really really cool and like it's just a really like interesting artistic way of kind of communicating that in song so that part has always just kind of stood out to me as being like really cool personally but yeah i can see where you guys are coming from with like i i I guess i it's so jarring that i kind of just every time i heard it went oh well okay but like i get like in context of like everything else going on i it does make like sense why it happens Mm -hmm. i still think it should go next but i know they're not voted so it's fine uh what (laughs) which other song do you guys think should go next i guess i i still think honey revenge is next i don't yeah i i really don't think anything else (laughs) can go under it me to say it yeah like i i like the song i just the more anytime i think that we have something that might go under it like we talk about it and i'm like no, I can't. <laughs> I can't justify that. Yeah, I think I I mean, I honestly thought like personally I was like, all right, accept a speech then Honey Revenge. So like if I'm outvoted, I, I can I can get down with Honey Revenge being next. I love Honey mm-hmm. Revenge. It's one of my personal faves, honestly, mm-hmm. but I think that like as far as like what the rest of this album brings, I think this is this is about a good place for it. Yeah. Because I think every song after this really does just like do something crazy, you know? Like it really yeah. brings so much to the table and there's so much going on, like so many little intricate things that it's like, oh fuck. That like I think <laughs> we're we're breaking into it now. It's time. We're it's time yeah. to yeah, we've already broken is... down these songs like crazy, but like going from here, it's like, ooh, baby. Yeah, ooh, I don't baby. even I really don't know where to go from this point. Well, let's uh, let's recap real quick, just so okay. we know what we have yeah. left to work with. So number eleven was Demo Team. Number ten, Doom and Gloom. Number nine, Carve. Number eight, Jesus H Macy. Number seven, Honey Revenge. What we've got left Ooh. is the Robot with Human Hair Part Four, Death of the Robot with Human Hair, Strawberry Swisher Part Three, Turn Off the Lights, and Acceptance Speech, and the Jiggler, which. I, I genuinely don't know where to go from here. I I mean, I think, because, like, the ones that were just on the chopping block were Honey Revenge, Jiggler, and uh, Acceptance Speech. And if I'm being honest with you, I can see those two next ones also coming next. That's just me. Mm. Um, Possibly. I feel like... I don't know, man. Like, I, it's hard because like we haven't talked about some of these other ones yet. I'm I'm getting scared because like I'm starting to lower Strawberry Swisher objectively, which like hurts me on a deep emotional level. But like, the more we talk about some of these other songs, I'm kind of starting to think that maybe that one's gonna be coming up next. I think I don't agree. I think Strawberry Swisher is near. The I point. agree. I th- I think it's let's top let's five. okay. Let's talk about oh. Strawberry Swisher because I need. I need clarity in this situation because I need to separate my personal, uh, like feelings for this song over the objectivity of this thing that's happening. So, uh, both of you, tell me about this song. Who wants to? <laughs> who wants to go first? I kind of want to hear Kyle first. Or do you want to well, hear me first? <laughs> I mean, I'm. Yeah, I mean honestly, because my, if, my, you wanna, uh, if you want to, if you want us to opinion sway you. <laughs> starting off is just that like, <laughs> so like this song to me is just like, it's chaotic, but it's incredible. Like it's just the two words that I could use to describe it. Like it's some. I think it's like there's just so much going on at all times, and it's just so fast paced and in your face, and also just super fucking groovy. And, like, it's just a clusterfuck of grooviness. Like, that's how I describe this song. And, like, just, I, I think the fact that there's, at every point in the song, it feels like there's just so much energy and so much happening and so many notes just blasting out at you that, like, the fact that they can do that and it still just works as, like, a groovy flow and it's not, like, overwhelming at all, I just think that's really cool. Like, they hit this really cool balance with it. Um, I, it's, it's the original Tillian disco sex jam in my, I think, I, I mean, like, I don't, I can get, the, I honestly get down with that. Hard yeah. I mean, I like the, the whole, like chorus is, is pretty much just disco sex jammy, you know, mm-hmm. um, which is the main reason I, I kind of like it. Um, 
I don't think there's, I really don't think there's anything bad about the song. And I think the fact that it's super catchy, it offers crazy instrumentals. It offers some uh, very interesting lyrics. I believe it's about like anti-religion, if I am interpreting it right. I'm not sure. Because he's, he's like, fun. I've I got a big ass book. I'm not a crook, but I'll take your guilt in the form of dollars. That sounds very like churchy, you know? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like an offering. Yeah, that's always what I thought of it as. Um, yeah, no, it's so and then like the, the lyrics are like fall in line with me and all that stuff. It's it seems like it's a song about like trying like uh, like people trying to like conform you to religion and stuff. And I just thought that was like really interesting. Um, Obviously, doesn't paint it in a good light, so take that as you will. But like, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think I I think it's a good song. I don't I don't have any like gripes against it at all. But then, like in saying that, I don't necessarily know if it has as much of a like. I, I don't know if it's like as layered or as impactful as some of this other stuff, like acceptance speech or anything. After we've talked about it, so I don't know. Well, Brennan, <laughs> oh would you, what are you feeling? You want to go next? You want me to go next? Uh, I actually have one gripe about it, but it's like, I think it's totally personal. Okay, okay go for it. Because I also kind of have a gripe with it, so I'm curious to see if it's the same I mean, gripe. It, yeah, it's, I mean, this is just me. I mean, obviously there's probably the rest of the world doesn't agree with this. I do agree with Tyler that this song has a ton of shit going on. I think this song is kind of like a really quick punch more than it is like a prolonged experience like a lot of these other songs. And I mm-hmm. think that's kind of what will hold it back as far as like being like at the tippity top. Mm-hmm. I will say the actual chorus. All right. Like not the part where like John Mess is saying like I give you the words of wisdom that you need to hear like that part. Like I think that part's groovy. Mm-hmm. But like right after that the part where he's singing keep my fingers crossed and like all that shit Mm -hmm. for some reason i don't like that part really i just don't like how like how he sounds like and how like the song kind of like it like shifts for us like i don't really know how else to say it but like everything just kind of like shifts for a second and like just how he sounds like singing it like i don't like it that's totally personal but it's just like that, like, honestly, like hearing like, OK, if we were if like the three of us were drunk hearing this song, I will belt that part. But like for like listening to it on my own, like, honestly, I just skip it at that part. Like, I just I don't like it. I disagree I mean, with your opinion, but it, it's I 100 percent disagree. Too. It's oh, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I'm just yeah. saying, like, to me, like that, that really holds it back. From being like the top and then plus like. Like I said, this song is like a really quick punch. Like it has yeah. a ton of shit going on. It has like instrumentals up the ass. And like See, I even put in my notes, I don't think the song deserves that kind of blasphemy because the rest of it's really good. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's just like the rest is like it's just a really quick hit while like yeah. a ton of the other songs are like journeys. I can totally agree that it doesn't deserve to be the top near the top because it's a quick punch. Like I can t- I can get down with that. I definitely feel that. Um I 100% don't agree with your with your your feelings about that one part, but that's just me. Uh, and I think it's oh, the majority, but I mean. it's I think it's a personal thing. I the thing that I have a gripe about it with is right when it transitions from the 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 really like fast drums, like the double time drums, going into that the keep my fingers crossed bit. That yeah. first time that happens, it feels a little weird moving. Yeah, from because it is the same time, but it goes straight from the drums being boom 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 to yeah, it's like, and then it just yeah, like, and it just really like spreads out. It's the, still yeah. the same time, but like it spreads out so much more than like that really intense fast drums. So yeah. it, there's like always because it it's not wrong, but the way it was written catches me every time because I always go oh oh like it, it's like a it's like almost I I said speed bump earlier and honestly this is kind of like perfect for it because that's kind of what this feels like to me. It's not wrong. And a speed bump doesn't destroy your car every time, but like, <laughs> it's like it's, all, it's almost like a like a little moment where I'm just like, oh, 
And it kind of pulls me back in a song where it is very like always in your face. This isn't a song that it's like building up and coming back down and really like slowly building with like torn down exposed lyrics. It is very much like, like Tyler was saying, a disco sex jam all the time. So I, I yeah. definitely. And that's, fact... that's what I meant whenever like the song kind of shifts. Cause like you said, like he's going to double time. It's like, put the, put the, put the, put the, and then yeah. it's just like, like, like you said, like it's the same time, but, like the drums just spread out. And like, mm-hmm. I just, I don't like it. Like, like that, like that whole part, like not like just how like the whole thing kind of goes. And then like, for me, like him singing, like how he does, like mm-hmm. that's like the cherry on top of like a Sunday. I don't want like, damn, <laughs> that's, that's so <laughs> that's beautifully like said. I loved that. <laughs> I mean, cause it's, um, cause like you said, like that whole part, like it's, it builds up, it builds up, it builds up. And then like, it keeps that, but like different, like I said, like shifts. Yeah. So it's like, I totally, I totally get that great. So yeah. do does that mean that we want to put that song next? So no, oh. no, because I think so. But I yeah. have more to say about it. I I was just <laughs> going, yeah, yeah. I was jumping on the gripe bandwagon. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Because uh, I I one hundred percent think this song is uh like top top five ish. Uh, I because I don't I do like I I agree with you, Brennan, that I don't think it's definitely like top of the the t- the cream of the crop of this album. Because yeah. you're right, it is very just punchy in your face, and it, it, it's one note is a disservice because it's not one note. There's a lot going on, but as far as like other songs where like there's a lot of changes and like like even acceptance speech, the song that I said I don't really like, there is like that really big building at the end that is just like beautiful and like so complex. Whereas this song is really dope and has so many good instrumentals and so many good lyrics and like so many good vocals. But it's all like kind of like that same, like we talk about roller coaster a lot. It is very like the peak of the roller coaster all the time. And now that it's a bad thing because it's dope and I love it and I turn it on and I jam to it every time. This is one of the songs that like I have come back to more often than the others. Like I've said, there's yeah. only a couple songs that I come back to. And this is one of them because I know I'm like, this is going to be a blast the entire fucking time. <laughs> and I'm just going to feel it. And, it. and it is. And it's like... To this day, one of my most played from this album. It's not played a lot because I don't play this album a lot, but that's okay. Um, but I I think this is like one of my like personal faves. Objectively, I don't think it's the top, but I think there is a lot going on with it. And I think mm-hmm. like instrumentally, it it is like high class. Not top yeah. class, but high class. I think vocally, it's high class. I think there's it's really energetic, really exciting, and super solid. So mm-hmm. I don't... It doesn't really make much sense for it to come next in my mind, but yeah, it's it's weird because it's like I I genuinely just don't know what would go next because like I think that while Strawberry Swisher is my personal favorite off the album, it's the one I listen to the most. It's the one that stuck with me the longest. Uh, I think it's just the best like straight up jam off the album. Does that make it objectively better than any of the other remaining options? And my gut is telling me no. But I don't actually know. I'm going to put it out there. I would personally say it's better than The Jiggler. Um, Let that simmer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, I'll have to think about this for a second. Because if I'm being honest, I'm looking at the other songs. I think it's better than acceptance speech, but you guys feel very strong about acceptance speech, so I guess that's not a conversation. Uh, I just, but, I yeah, don't right. know, man. It's it's such a tough call because, like, in my eyes, like Strawberry Swisher is great, and it's a disservice to put it not in the top five. But then at the same time, I feel like it would be wrong of me to put something ahead of something else just because of my personal attachment to it and not because of like what the song actually offers so like i think i'm gonna kind of shoot myself in the foot here and agree with brennan that it needs to be number six just Just because i can't come up with an argument to put it above any of the other songs objectively so just to clarify, he is not agreeing with the he doesn't. I'm not agreeing with his stupid reason of I don't like the way he <laughs> says the word, but like I just think that like 
as we talk about all of these other songs, I feel like there's just been more to say yeah. of why some of these other songs are so great. And this one, it's the explanation kind of just boils down to it's really fun. And that's like it. So like I, yeah. as, as like, as reviewer Tyler and not, hip cool kick flipping kid tyler i'm gonna have to like <laughs> uh i'm gonna have to put strawberry swisher next i think so i i actually have a point i'd like to make oh boy because now that we've talked about how you know freaking what was you talking about strawberry swisher uh doesn't really have a ton going on compared to a lot of the songs of this album the song right behind it, as it stands, is Honey Revenge. Of which is a song that has a lot unique and going on in it all over the place. And is super solid. I'm putting it out there. We don't have to change that. Because I think these songs are, like, in good places. Could they swap? I'm putting it out there. Possibly. I, it would wound my pride. I know it would. I, Brennan, what do you think? <laughs> See, whenever it came to tabling them, like whenever we had our first like table round, mm -hmm. you guys picked the two tracks that I honestly thought would be next. Oh. Strawberry Swisher and The Robot with Human Hair Part 4. Really? Hmm. I am totally down with putting Honey Revenge over Strawberry Swisher Part 3. That's a sin. Kyle, don't do that. You know you don't want this. You said yourself that you think Strawberry Swisher is top five. Yeah, material. but then you literally backed away from it. And, and I said it's number me six material. I didn't say it was anything below that. Tyler, you convinced me backwards. Then you started talking about how I like, didn't literally convince you backwards that far, Kyle. Honey Revenge is already there. We can't move it. Don't let this I... podcast descend into anarchy because of your hubris. <laughs> let's uh, let's do it. <laughs> that was let's such an it. evil laugh. Because <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I feel evil right now, and it's like totally what I want to do. But like, I feel bad for Tyler's pride and ego. Hmm. <laughs> this is but it's interesting like predicament. Totally, <laughs> but it's like totally what I want to do. Like. Like, honestly, like, I'm not too high on Strawberry Swisher Part 3. I'm just not. See, I, I'm very yeah. high on both of these songs. Personally, they're two of my, like, listened to songs, are Strawberry Swisher and Honey Revenge. So, it is tough I for me. I love Honey Revenge. I, 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 I will ask you this. How often do you come back and listen to Honey Revenge instead of Strawberry Swisher Part 3? Kyle, not Brennan. <laughs> I was about to say, dude, are you going to ask me that? No, I'm going to ask <laughs> Kyle this. <laughs> the songs I come back to, like before re listening to this album, right? There are yes. three songs that I would come back to, like more over than every other song. Maybe like fucking The Jiggler on occasion. But like there were three that were like mainstays for me that I knew were solid from this album. And before re coming back to this, I thought were that everything else was kind of eh. And those three songs were Robot with Human Hair Part 4, mm -hmm. okay. Strawberry Swisher Part 3. Mm hmm. And Honey Revenge. Fuck, do what you want. I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you have set it in motion. It has been written, so it shall be done. Oh, no. I put it out there. I really thought it was going to be shot down. I'm really surprised. <laughs> Why were you surprised? Because <laughs> Brennan it, openly dude. said that he didn't like that song. <laughs> uh, Kyle, come on. Come to the dark side, bro. I really, like, honestly, because, like, I think the stuff Honey Revenge does is just better. I think there's a yes. lot going on, really unique. There's the mixed meter stuff. There's all like I these are two of the songs the instrumental stand out to me on the most. Part of the reasons why I come back to them so often. And I think Honey Revenge does more like building, like which is exactly what Tyler, you constantly talk about loving songs yes. do that Strawberry Swisher does not do as much. Way to just way to just rub up my dick for the past twenty minutes and then crack it in half at the very end. That's delightful. <laughs> well, Thank I was that. joining yeah. you and then oh. you left me to join Brennan. And I left I was you like, you know, by like a small margin, and then you were like, "No, <laughs> I'm gonna to leave put you." It next. Fucking I two towns I over. Descent. I love it. You left me far enough to disagree and put it next, and then I you and then you talked more about it, and I went, "You're right. This song is kind of just like." one hit hard good and then everything that 
And then okay, and then I will. <laughs> that's your official stance on on this song. It's one hit hard good. <laughs> Oh, dude, we were falling mm, off the rails. Come sure. on, one hit hard good. Put it yeah, at the bottom, Kyle. You know what? No, it's the official. Put it in. Put it in number eleven. One hit hard good. <laughs> one star. I would never, in a million years, put it beneath demo team. Not in any. Oh, okay. No, no, well, that, at least that's... there is some uh, sanity left in this uh, fucking it, podcast. Even an, I... an evil bastard like me knows not to do that. <laughs> I think. I think we do Fine. it. Fine. I think we're doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm all in, baby. I'll, I guess I'll dip my hand into the bloody hole where my penis used to be. And then just <laughs> rub my hand on this list and wash away the spot where yes. Strawberry Swisher was. Yes, Kyle, betray him. <laughs> oh, all right, boys, wow. we got to keep moving here. Um, oh, strawberry Swish, my cock in the back of your throat for putting me through that. Damn, okay. Well, You're all right, so Honey Revenge is six. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> is strawberry swisher seven i yes. guess yes you are Fine. outvoted tyler yes. whatever the w- the dumb part is i kind of can agree with it though and it just makes me upset exactly that I, can't. I mean like at the end of the day like they're both slappers we can agree with that 100 percent. they are both slappers no like i, I said agree. Too- i agree with how we're placing these i just don't like how we came to it <laughs> all right well well let's just go- come let's just come to it and go past it <laughs> <laughs> Holy you can shit. Go cry about have... it. What do you think should be next, Brennan? <laughs> uh, well, obviously it's well. We have Death Strawberry Swisher no, Seven. Uh, we have uh, Honey Revenge Six. What's something that Kyle really likes? Oh Jesus! Robot I'm Human totally Hair Four. <laughs> <laughs> he he really loves the Robot Human Hair Part Four. Fuck, Fuck it, put it next. <laughs> Dude, I do like that. You know what? Then let's compare it to the one below it, and then let's decide: Should Honey Revenge be above? Uh, <clears throat> The robot with human hair. I'm oh, down to have this conversation. Argument. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, well, yeah, we, I, we haven't talked about robot with, robot with human hair part four yet, so let's talk about yeah. it. I'm down. Hmm. I will it's, say I think this is better than than Honey Revenge. So. Oh yeah, I. <laughs> by, I think Honey, by Honey Revenge is as high as it's gonna get. Yeah, I don't. Opinion. I yeah, would be. I, I would be actually mad if we put Honey Revenge any higher. No. So, this is, this is it. So this is the okay. buck stops have, here. The ga- I'm we putting the what? gavel down. It's it's done. It's there. This is yeah, it's set in stone. We're not touching this anymore. So we have what? Back to the Future Part Two, The Jiggler, uh, Except Death Beach, Death of the Robot with Human Hair, and Robot with Human Hair. This is tough. I, yeah. I know that we fought really hard for this song before, but I think it's between Acceptance Speech and the Robot with Human Hair. For next part mm. four. Wait, what does that leave then? Hang I on. think mm. that would leave. I don't know. Leave. This is tough. I one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Oh wait, oh Jiggler's left too, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we have Back to the Future, The Jiggler, Death of the Robot, Acceptance Speech, and Human Hair Part Four. That's what we have left. Top five. Uh, the three that I think are the closest to coming next, in my mind, and I'm going to put it out there and see what you guys think, are The Jiggler, Death of the Robot, and uh, Accepted Speech. I think those three, I have... <laughs> see, those three songs I have gripes with, and the other two I just don't have gripes with at all. And that's where I sit with them right now. And like some of them like are subjective, some of them are objective. But like that's where I personally sit. So in my mind, there is a divide right now. I don't know how you guys feel about them, but I'm just gonna put that out there. Robot with human hair part four, mm-hmm. and this is a similar argument I have with Strawberry Swisher part three. It is another like really quick punch song. Granted, I think it's like other than that, I don't really have any cons at all. Like, and I really dig. Like toward like right before the second chorus, where it's like Tilly and like singing, and it's like what have I done? And it's just like yeah. that part, like that part. Mm-hmm. I think is just immaculate. I think this so. is. I think <clears throat> Robot with Human Hair Part Four it might be Tillian's best vocals on the album. That's bold. That's I bold. I can. That's really bold. 
I can hear arguments and I can kind of see them, but personally, I think some of like the crazy vocals he hits on this, both like the low stuff and the I wear my soul on my sleeve tonight, and then the what have I done? He's like soaring stuff. Mm-hmm. Like he, he kind of like really is a wide range of stuff going on. Because like I can definitely see that the ending of acceptance speech, his vocals are really good, and I can see uh, turn off the lights. He has some really great stuff too. Uh, I just think overall, I think this is his vo- best vocal thing. I can hear arguments. I could totally understand that. I'm, it, I, it doesn't really matter, but, you know. I would say the only real knock I have against this song, because, like, in general, I love it. Like, I think it has, like, one of the catchiest choruses on the album. It's, like, it's very dynamic. Like, it's got the epic bridge, and, like, the mm-hmm. everything is layered very well. There's a lot of good back and forth between Tillian and John, but, like, I don't know if I necessarily like the verses that much. Or like the, I don't know what part of the song it is, but like the. Well, when he wears his uh, soul on his sleeves at night. That's that's kind of like a setup. I th- yeah, I think that might be what I'm talking about. It's like, it's not bad, but I think like, and this is just a very like personal thing that holds no real weight. I just think that like. Mm-hmm. If I'm thinking about what songs are left, obviously I think all of the songs that are left are objectively very good. Yeah. I think I of the songs that are left, well. the the ones that I would go to the most on a whim would be Death of the Robot, Acceptance Speech, and The Jiggler. Personally. So the ones that I said I think come next. <laughs> it, <laughs> Yes, yeah. but that's just my personal yeah. thought process. I mean, like, the Robot with Human Hair Part 4, mm-hmm. I get where Kyle's coming from as far as, like, Tillian is showing, like, a lot of, I guess, range. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, all right, like, on Afterburner, parody catharsis is literally just an exposition of Tillian, pretty much. Sure. Like in that Fuck song, that he song. hits literally, <laughs> huh? I love that song so much, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, same. That, that honestly, that's my favorite song of the album. But because in literally in that song, he hits the highest note in the entire album, and he hits the lowest note of the entire mm-hmm. album. Like for him, yeah. The robot with human hair is not nearly as extreme because, mm-hmm. like, you know, whenever he's saying like he has he wears a soul on his sleeve at night, yeah. Like it's low, but it's not like yeah. it's parody not the catharsis. Low. Yeah, yeah, and like the chorus, like, like to me, like the one word I have in my notes, like more than once, is that the song is kind of simplistic, but very catchy. Like, it, it's a damn good song, but like, I just don't think it has much compared to the rest. See, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. This is just like a super solid package to me, and I don't, I don't, I do not agree with like the the. It's a quick song; it's three and a half minutes. I don't. I think that <laughs> like you know maybe it does feel like it kind of happens really quickly because I I will say you know like it is kind of repetitive. However, it is kind of the same vein of the argument you guys gave about acceptance speech, where like he gets really crazy there and it's kind of weird. And it's because, like, that's his breaking point. Whereas this, it's just him constantly telling himself, you know, hang on, don't lose composure. Hang on, don't lose composure. Hang on. And then, like, he starts to break a little bit and then he comes back from that. And he, like, does, he gains composure again, you know? I just think it's really cool. Um, I mean, that's that's just how I'm feeling about it. And that's, like, what I took notes on. That's why I think it's super solid. What do you think should be next? What do I think should be next? Yeah. I mean, acceptance speech, but I think, you know, <laughs> we've, we've, we've cleared that up many times already in the past couple songs. But the other song that I could see coming oh, next boy. that I do think, uh, I think you might, guys might be able to get behind is The Jiggler. I kind of feel like it's time. I, it's I personally think The Jiggler is better than The Robot with Human Hair Part 4. I can agree. All right. Well, I'm outvoted. Let's move on. <laughs> Because I've I've talked all the shit on Jiggler and I've I've applauded the other one, so I'm just outvoted. Let's keep moving, I guess. So we, does that mean we're putting Robot with Human Hair Part Four in the number five spot? I guess. 
I was like, I've given, it. I've given okay. my arguments I'm, for both. I'm, I'm okay I, with that too. I mean, at this point, it's it really is more of just like more personal choice yeah. as far as the voting goes, because like all these songs are pretty close to perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, at least I mean, as far I, as this album goes. So like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's a disservice for any of these songs to be in like any specific spot at this point. I think it's all gonna come down to personal preference now. <laughs> I mean, I think the next two, like. I mean, we're talking like four and three, uh huh, or probably between acceptance speech and the jiggler. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Like I, I would totally be cool. I mean, I do. I see what Kyle means as far as like the first half of acceptance speech. Like I get that, like it doesn't have like a shit ton going on. I mean, even though like Will Swan is hitting some licks, and, like the drums are also like mimicking that as well. Mm hmm. Um, but I feel like another point that he brought up, like the jiggler kind of like, it's like an amalgamation of like different things that DGD is like known for. Yeah. But there are times where it is kind of rocky. I mean, just like, like how the song is kind of broken up, but then like, I really fuck with it. Mm hmm. Like, I think the Jiggler... I mean, it's one of the songs I come back to off this album, but then yeah. I also come back to Acceptance Speech a lot. So I I will say that I think that if if these are going to be the next two spots, I think the Jiggler should be over <laughs> Acceptance Speech. And I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. And I, I just think that, like... That. What'd you say? I said I agree with that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think that, like, the Jiggler, it's, it's a little catchier. It, it like, it it doesn't necessarily offer more because I think both songs offer a lot. But I just think that like, if you're looking for like a DGD experience, I would say the Jiggler is closer to that than Acceptance Speech. You know? Yeah. <laughs> now here's an argument I'm gonna bring up. <clears throat> oh boy. What do we do? We think that Death of the Robot with Human Hair is better than the Jiggler. Because this is a toss-up for me, I think. Because right, I so like... We have, ex we have acceptance speech at four. Yeah, I think we're going to lock acceptance speech at four. So we've got the Jiggler, Turn Off the Lights, and Death of the Robot as the top three. Um, And I'm fine with any of these songs going in any order, honestly. Um, <laughs> But we have not really talked about Death of the Robot with Human Hair at all we haven't really talked about that or Trump. turn off the lights yet yeah um yeah so i think we we just kind of need to dive deeper into these um i think we start with death of the robot with human hair okay personally but i mean i just i've always really liked this song uh part of it came from like uh, the first time i listened to it was watching the music video which is just really fucking cool it's just like yeah. robot jesus versus hitler robot dog fight thing and it's yeah. cool and it kind of like the end the way the song ends i feel like it ends that way because it lines up with the music video and without that context it sounds kind of random see i don't think it sounds random i think it's cool i know I'm, I'm, like, I'm like it still sounds cool i guess just yeah. like with the added context of like the fact that it like fades out yeah. and then like comes back as like a little reprise thing yeah like it I, just I, makes more yeah. sense in context with the video as opposed to like on its own but i still like it i still think it sounds cool see i i actually refrain from watching the music video for a while just because of that yeah because i because i really like the song on its own mm-hmm Cause like it's another one where like the song kind of ends is how it begins, right? And when Kyle texted us the other day about are we gonna go with the original or the two point re release? This is one song that like I kind of don't like how they changed it. Honestly, yeah, I kind of liked the original version better, and that might just be because I'm so used to it. Now. The only change, because, like, there's, like, the one part where, like, John Mass is, like, screaming, and it's, like, really, like, a slow beat, and they have more, like, bass explosions kind of going on. Sure. But the part that I dislike is at the very, very beginning, Tillian isn't singing. Yeah, when I know. In the original, I was, he was singing. I was pissed they took that out. It bothers me. Like, I forgot they did that in the in the new version. I listened to it today. I was like, what the fuck? 
Like what yeah. what happened? Oh right, they changed it. Like that that is like the one change on this album that I am just not for. Yeah. However, I don't feel like that takes away from the song. Oh yeah. Because like even like how as the song ends, like he's singing that part where he's like hush now, like you know all that. And oh, man, like how we talked about the jiggler having like so much like going on and like transitioning and stuff. Like so is the death of the robot with human hair, and oh, so sure. is Back to the Future Part Two. Yeah, right? <laughs> like like we have we have three songs that are like the epitome of Dance Gavin Dance right now. Sure, I can get down and, with like, that honestly. Like yeah, I've always had like an emotional attachment with this song. I mean, obviously that's a personal thing. I don't think that carries too much weight at the mm. moment. But I mean, even like, even the obligatory Will Swan rap feature in the middle of the song, yeah. Like, cause, cause I remember one time, like, I was like skeptical of that. I'm like, if I play this song like in a crowd of people, like, are they gonna dig that? <laughs> and then like me just now, I'm like, well, I fucking dig it. So like, yeah. Guess, who cares what anyone else? That's thinks? like my favorite part of the whole fucking Dude, song. Exactly. It's it's legit so same. good. <laughs> Like, it's like fucking gang chanty Will Swan. It's so great. It's like, make this motherfucker golden. Like, <laughs> oh my! It's it's just so like just like awe inspiring. Like it's like it's just awesome. And yeah. then, like I said, like the song like ends how it, it's like like the intro is played backwards. Like right, it because literally like he's singing like he sings like the entire part like. I guess like the second part of the intro and then the song ends with him singing like what he would have sung in the original like before like the song actually kicks off right right and then even whenever it like like it deconstructs and like slows down it's like a fucking train wreck like fucking and then it like picks back up with like a pop beat like ooh like that just, that just hits yeah me. and then will swan comes back and like wraps it like yeah like says the line some more and it's like this is like everything I want. <laughs> I also think it's really cool how like the the drums are like really like weirdly like syncopated with like the Will Swan yeah. uh, lyrics yes. at the end. It's really fucking cool. I think it all it also happens a little bit in the before the hush now becomes that different beat. Yeah. With the way that Tillian sings it, it does get a little like syncopated at times, and it's really cool. The more you guys talk about it, because I did, I brought this up very early on the song because yeah, I did. was just like, I don't know how I feel about it. Because honestly, I don't like I because <laughs> like there are parts of it like, and the more you guys are talking about it, the more I'm really digging it. I do think there are a couple times where, like the effects get a little like too much at times, if I'm being honest. But I don't mm-hmm. think it like it's never bad. I just think that like it's odd. I mean, because we were talking about these three songs are very DGD, but I think the they really like often don't like go into effects a ton whereas in this song i think that it is very heavy heavily used compared to especially the other stuff but yeah it's not necessarily a bad thing and it, i think it's more just subjective thing like near the beginning specifically before that swing beat comes in on the drums i i just like i'm like oh that's kind of weird but then like as it goes you know it kind of works especially with the stuff that happens later it kind of makes sense um yeah no, i'm really i'm the more we talk about it, the more i am down for the song i think yeah the the hush now bits the way that that builds near the end is so cool back into the, the new beat with will swan at the end i think mm-hmm. the will swan bit bit in this i i say this almost every time we talk about will swan's parts and stuff but this might be my favorite will swan feature <laughs> i think you could probably take me from every single time we've talked about a will swan feature and i've said it each time as we go but this one's really cool it's very different too yeah. It's very obviously a lot different than the others. It's so commanding. Usually it's just kind of like a little, like, you know, the sprinkles on top, you know, it's a little extra. But in this one, it takes over. It's so powerful all of a sudden. It's yeah. Like, I really, it's like a, like a, like a, like a high point and it comes, starts to come back down off of it from that. Mm-hmm. And like leading up to that is a build. It's a really cool, like, just like a mountain of a song, honestly. Right. And it, it's kind of cool. I really dig it. I, uh, uh, I mean, the more we talk about it, like, I think that, Death of the Raw with Human Hair just hits this, like, super unique vibe that, like, no other DGD song really comes close to. Like, it's... Obviously, every DGD song 
or not every DG song, but a lot of them like offer a lot to take you on a journey. There's a lot of switch ups and stuff. This one, I feel like it's just so much in its own zone that like nothing mm -hmm. else really sounds anything like it. Correct. Um, I agree. And Which I is why it kind of caught me off guard at first. Yeah, you know? That's yeah, why I was for sure. like, it's I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, I think that like everyone the first time they hear it are kind of in the same boat as you because I feel like I was in the same boat too like way back in the day when I heard it the first time like it's just it's very weird when you hear it the first time and it's just it's a lot to take in but like once you like process it and kind of like get used to it and it's just like it grows on you and then you're like this song slaps hard and like it just it literally does not sound like anything else at all and it's just so fucking cool and it's so fucking good i mean honestly the more we're talking about it i feel like not not to say that this should be number one but i feel like of any of the three songs we have left if i was just to show somebody one of the songs who hadn't listened to dgd before i would show them this one over the other two see that i don't agree with that at all though because really? the song i feel like is really because like while it is you even said it, you said it's very unique it's very its own thing but i still would show them like well, are you saying, like, off of this album specifically? Off this album specific, not in general. Because I like, would still show them, like, Strawberry Swisher Part 3, because I feel yeah, like it's so no, I, I'm, I'm literally saying, like, of the three songs left. Of the three like, songs. Like, I think that, in, in my opinion, I think Death of the Robot with Human Hair is a more essential DGD song than the other two. That's just my take. Um, I can I agree think, with that against the Jiggler. <clears throat> I think Back to the Future Part 2 would like a word. Yeah. I think hit me with it. I I I'd like to just <laughs> propose the fact like I would I'm going to put it on the table jiggler number 3. I can get behind I that. I'm totally cool with that. I'm fine. And with I, that. I I think we're in a battle for number 1 here cuz yeah, I mean I don't think it's going to be much of a battle. I think I think it's just I think it's going to be turn off the lights, right? I really think so. Like I super like yes. I don't I legitimately don't think it's a contest. Like that's how good this song is. Right. Like I if I'm being completely honest with you. I think it's a contest, but I do think that Back to the Future Part 2 has it's I mean, I think it's going to win. I mean, I I'd, I'd probably vote for it. I'm not going to vote against it for being number 1, so if we just want to talk about it a little I just, bit. I just don't want to like I just don't want to like downsell Death the Robot no. in here cuz right. I no, think I it's I mean, I like I've shown people it in the past, and you're like, "Oh my god, like what is this band?" And then like they like DGD now, but you know, in the same get together, I'll play Back to the Future Part Two, and it's like the same thing. And like this song competes with Evaporate, I feel as far as being like towards the top of like album enders. Yeah, you know, like like how, like how we had evaporate from artifice selection, like on such a high pedestal. I think Back to the Future Part Two is like the same, like not. I I think evaporates like a little better, <clears throat> but I think Back to the Future Part Two is probably like their second best ender. Yeah, I can get behind of all that. time. I and would then, honestly go to the lengths of saying it's probably the best i think i think evaporate is very good i know that i was against it when we <laughs> talked about it in that review i have come around to it majorly i do like that song a lot however i think overall as a song i think this song the turn off the lights i'm uh, watching back to the future part two is so good dude like i don't i don't it, oh like, yeah there is so much because it's funny right because i talked about like my overall feeling about this album is that it's super like there's so many really bright moments with like, and then like there's some little moments here and there that I feel like maybe is a little disjointed or like they just really don't like have that core sound locked in yet. So it doesn't always like 100% connect. And that does happen at times. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just like, you know, they're still developing as a group. They're new they, with Tillian, you know, it's a new feeling. It's a new, it's very much a new vibe, I think, especially compared to the last two singers. Um, But, you know, this song throws all that out the window every single transition is like gorgeous like mm -hmm. the way that like as early on i can't remember exactly what the lyrics are but i think it's the shimmy my way under underground where like tillian first comes in like the note rings over from that first the the first part of the song and then like he just picks up singing off of that first note and it continues into that next really like smooth 
guitar playing again. Like, yeah. And there's so many times where Will Swan legit, I don't like, I'm not joking. Will Swan is like at his best in this song. Not like the best of all of the Will Swan stuff, but like some of his best stuff he's ever done. In my opinion, like Will Swan destroys this song. There are moments where he goes on licks and then Tillian's just like hitting these crazy notes, especially near the last half of the song that I literally just kind of had to like lean back in my chair and absorb. Cause I was like, this is right. so good. Like this. Oh my gosh, dude. Like this song, this is the song that I said, like there is a song that really caught me off and it was this one. Cause I didn't realize it. I never come back to this one. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's the album ender. Oh, it's pretty long, whatever. And I listened to it. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, what have I been doing my entire life? This <laughs> song is so good. I'm not joking. It's probably my favorite album ender. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Like, there's a part where, like, John says he's going to grapple, he's like grappling the birthday cake, and, like, him and yeah. Tillian are, like, bouncing <laughs> off of each other. Yeah. That and part is sick. <laughs> it, it, oh my God. It's. Uh, it, it, like it's it's like beyond comprehension like how good that part is right and then all of a sudden Tillian comes in with a better one where he's he's telling this girl that he's gonna beat her fucking guts in like the most sensual way I've ever heard <laughs> like he's like we've been apart for weeks I'm gonna tear apart these sheets like something similar to that and it's just like like really soft guitars like kind of reminds me of like the very opening lick of like lemon meringue tie like, like that's just like the kind of like shit that's like going on while like Tillian is just like singing like yeah oh my god like he's just like oh my gosh like this girl like I can't wait to be back with her and like all that shit and then like quick transition like you just hear like the snare and like the guitar like hit and then it's just back to like John Mess like fucking like this wild beat like I don't like it's almost like a dance beat kind of but like and it's like the guitar is like like it's just like so much like different shit going on like. Oh my gosh. Like 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 this song is where they like I mean like Death the Robot with Human Hair like also but like like the issues they've had with songs before where it seems like they're trying stuff like like trying different transitions like trying new things like it's not really landing well. Like this song like all that just disappears. It's like they fully mature like by the time they get to this song. Because, like, the transitions, like, it's just, like, one after another after another, like, different, like, parts of the song. It's, like, dude, like, they're just nailing it. Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean. You know something I just kind of clicked on and, like, it kind of brings this whole thing full circle? I was talking about earlier Jesus H. Macy, how, like, I really appreciated him just really going bare, like, the first time you hear him as part of this band, right? And, like, he's he's just singing raw He's singing like there's not a lot with him. It's the first time anyone hears him as part of this band. And it's honest. It's raw. And I can appreciate that. It's really dope. The last time you hear him in this entire album is the overcome by circumstances part. Uh, that bridge. And uh, the but I swear I've taught myself how to barricade the door. He like he like just goes soaring. He like there's a rasp in his voice. And then the guitar comes in like the like after that as he keeps going and he hits another higher note and it's just like like i get chills bro and it's like so raw and so like polished and it's like a perfect like back and forth from the very beginning of the album when people first hear him and now it's like this is what you get i'm fucking incredible dude and this is gonna be a wild ass ride and it's so good dude i just like (laughs) god it's beautiful man i just i cannot get over this song dude Uh, it's crazy yeah, no, Tyler, ahead. you really haven't got to say a ton yet. About no, this. I was, I was, I was, I was so literally hard. about to say, like, I didn't even take notes on this song because I knew that it was going to be super high up, <laughs> and I knew that you two were going to have so much to say about it that I just didn't write anything down because so I knew fair. you guys were going to hit the oh, nail on the head, gosh. and you did. So I don't need to say anything because you've said you've said it all. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I, I, th- th- this song had like my most like. Like I knew this song had to be at least like one or two. Like, there's no way that it, they could be any lower. Yeah, I know. I I totally agree. I wasn't sure if it was going to get up to number one, but I fully support that it happened. <laughs> like a hundred percent. So, as Kyle said, this is like DGD, like at their best. 
Yeah. And it's crazy because like it's literally just the beginning of this era, right? Like it is such just like a in your face, just you wait of what's to come, dude. Like we are here. We're we're about to just absolutely drop the hottest tune baskets on you. And boy, Bring do that back again. Tune there it baskets, is, boy. Man. The tune baskets, baby. It's back again. Oh my oh, god, dude! Like it's such such a solid album, under, dude. They just like just think of where they go after this, like right, like like just all these tune baskets that have come out after this. And like you said, like this is this is the ceremonious opening kickoff of the Tillian era. Right. And we just watched this band take it back to the house for a touchdown. Like this, this album is incredible. And like, that's why like, I'm so bummed that like me and like my young age, like just didn't fucking like this. (laughs) But (laughs) literally I've been saying this album is bad. Like, I know, <laughs> and I've been ass. very like, angry about that. I have been a sleeping child until literally like two <laughs> days ago, and I heard that song, and I went, "Oh no! I have been awakened. I've been awakened to the wonders of acceptance speech." Oh my god, it's so good, dude. I was I was worried that like you were going to come into this like still with the same mindset of like, yeah, this song, this album is bad, and I was like, I'm going to have to throw hands through. <laughs> The microphone. <laughs> See, <laughs> but I, luckily, I didn't have to do that. Hell's yeah, dude. Well, boys, we we did it. We got to the end uh, with minimal damage to our egos and friendships. So that takes us to the end. I guess we'll uh, we'll do a little recap, and then we'll call it a day. So oh, yeah. uh, number 11 is Demo Team. Number 10, Doom and Gloom. Number nine, Carve. Number eight, Jesus H. Macy. Number seven, Strawberry Swisher, part three. Number six, Honey Revenge. Uh, number five, The Rot with Human Hair, part four. Number four, Acceptance Speech. Number three, The Jiggler. Number two, Death of the Robot with Human Hair. And number one, Turn Off the Lights. I'm watching Back to the Future, part two. Woo! Yeah. We did it. This is, uh, this is a 100% accurate uh, ranking, and if you disagree, you're wrong. But if you do disagree, uh, tell us what your order was in the comments below. Because uh, we would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on on what you think and opinionate about this album and its many songs. Uh, if, you, uh, if you liked this little podcast... Then let us know by giving this video uh, a like, because that would help us out a ton. And uh, if you want to help us out even more and listen to more of our illustrious voices, then you can click that little old subscribe button and uh, check out our channel, The Talks A Lot Boys. We've done uh, album song rankings for every single Tillian era DGD album at this point, and a few other random ones from other bands. Um, And we also do other stuff, too. So go check that stuff out if you haven't already. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. That would give me a big old heckin' smile on my oh, little yeah. face. Anyway, we've uh, we've been the Talks Up Boys, and we'll talk a whole lot more next time. Bye! Adios! See ya!